Hey there, Cancer. Welcome to your reading for uh, mid, or this is for February 2022. This is part two, and we actually already did part one, which you see right here. There is a link for part one down below. So definitely check out part one if you haven't already watched it. Uh, but we're just gonna jump right in here and clarify. I'm actually gonna pull some extra cards as well for the other side. Uh, you have the second house, which says resources on it uh, in your first top row here, whatever you wanna call it. I'm going to put it right here. Again, I tried to think about, like, what's the most confusing, complicated spread I could come up with? I'm like, hey, why not make a bunch of connections between the cards around it? <laughs> That's what this is, Cancer. But uh, definitely could be an increase in your finances here. You have the Page of Pentacles also in that top row. So uh, with that hand card in your first row, you have this bowl. It says plenty of material things. There you go. Definitely uh, material things coming in for you. This could be material success as well. But it's like people, I, I number one, I would ask people for help at this time because you could be helping them. The other thing I'm getting here is it's like, you know, I, I think people don't realize when we ask for help, it's like it makes other people feel really good when they help us do something, right? So it's like when you ask someone for help, you're actually creating more abundance because it's like they're getting something from helping you. That's why um, I'm not a big fan of the whole independence thing where people are like, talk about how independent they are. I'm like, well, that's great, but you're not like helping other people either. <laughs> when you're like, I'm independent, I do everything on my own. It's like, well, you're kind of like taking things from other people uh, by doing that. Now, that's not exactly true, but you know, that's how I kind of see it. So I always tell people, ask people for help. If, and, and we can't be good at everything, you know, as human beings. It's like we are not good at every single little thing that exists. So there might be people who are better at doing things like in business and work. And uh, asking them for help would be a good idea. With the Page of Pentacles, you have the Five of Swords. Definitely a risk. It is a risk-taking time. Um, you know, the, the risks that we are all taking right now, I think, have to do with starting something new or, like I said in your first reading, uh, spreading yourself out a little bit. I, again, I'd be very careful of spreading yourself too thin. I think we need to understand that there's like a range here, right? There's like, there are some boundaries where I think we should maybe explore. We should be open to exploring new ideas, new hobbies, new new everything, right? And we should be open to exploring as long as we're not burning ourselves out, as long as we're not getting tired. Again, see how much you can do. You know, try a little bit. You know, if you're like, maybe you're like, you have a job and you're like, you know, I want to try the side business. It's like, try it a little bit, see what happens, see how much you can put into it. And if you can put more energy into it, keep going. I always tell people, it's like, these readings, for example, it's like this is my passion. So it's like when I do it, I actually fill up with energy. Uh, I wasn't feeling too good this morning when I started these readings. And <laughs> I'm only on my second one and I already feel a lot better. So, you know, it's kind of like when I'm doing something that I enjoy, it actually makes me feel better. And I think that some of you could be discovering that. But, you know, again, the risk is like spreading yourself too thin. Uh, so I would just like take your time, experiment a little, see how much you can give to other situations in your life. And if you can give more, great, give a little bit more, see how it goes. You know, I think we need to kind of play that, you know, do that dance, right? Uh, I hope that makes sense. With the Two of Swords, you have the Judgment card. Definitely like discovering a purpose. Um, I'm pretty sure Pisces had a very similar reading. So if you have Pisces in your chart, you might want to watch it. But the Judgment card is like your inner calling. You know, these people are being called out of their coffin by this higher self angel. Uh, you have the Two of Swords here because, um, I don't know, like the story for the past like two months for pretty much everyone is like we're all being called to something. Some of us can hear it. Maybe some of us can't hear the calling, but I feel like some of us, like some of you cancers, maybe you feel the pull. It's like you're feeling like things are changing. You're feeling different. Maybe some of you feel off or maybe you're feeling ungrounded. I kind of feel like I'm halfway out my body, actually. <laughs> so I would ground yourself here, Cancer, uh, or do some grounding exercises. A great grounding exercise is to like sit in a chair like this, both feet on the floor, and I just picture roots going straight into the earth, like shooting into the earth and then pulling my body down. So uh, that's a great grounding exercise, walking outside barefoot, but it's like the middle of winter right now, so probably not a good idea unless you're somewhere warm. But uh, doing those things will probably bring you back down to earth make you feel better but what i would say here is i would like try to answer the call as well uh, with the king of swords you have the six of swords moving on to calmer shores um yeah i just think that there are things that you know this is kind of like obvious energy to me because i think because of the times like you know we just had uranus go direct thank god right it's been a little bit a little bit weird with uranus retrograde although i think uranus direct is also going to bring in weirdness but uh, probably a little bit better 
I think that there are some things that maybe we're leaving behind. There is this maturing that seems to be going on. I've talked about this in a couple other readings. It seems to me like the energy is maturing. We're all becoming more mature, something like that. There's like, I think that maybe by the time we get to, you know, to like 2025, there's going to be a new understanding. I don't know what it looks like. I have no clue. <laughs> I just feel it. And I, it feels like maturing to me, maturing energy, um, and I, I, again, maybe we're I, like we're maturing as a society or whatever. But I think part of that it, with the Six of Swords is like all of us are maybe leaving certain things behind. It's like when we are children, we like doing things like playing with toys. And then as we grow older, we stop doing those things. I'm not saying that we should either. But, you know, it's like sometimes we move, we mature past certain things. Like I don't watch Barney anymore, right? So, <laughs> and I wouldn't want to. So it's like we kind of move past certain things. And I, that's how the Six of Swords is popping into my head for you, Cancer. Uh, with this diamond card, you have this bridge card. It says successfully overcome a problem. There you go. Any issues or difficulties that you're having, you will easily overcome. Like I said, the Six of Cups, which you have as the first card in this row, the Six of Cups can represent a turnaround. It's like the gift that you receive from the Six of Cups is an obstacle being removed from your life. So things are improving. And with the Six of Cups, you have the Emperor. Could also just be a solid plan. It's like, you know, Six of Cups, the gift is almost like after Eight of Swords energy. It, you know, the Eight of Swords being too close to a problem, not seeing a way around certain issues that you could be dealing with. The Six of Cups, it's like, with the emperor, you could have a solid plan or you could discover an answer um, in some ways. And it's like, I kind of have this, this specific story popping into my head. It, it's like, if you've ever been super frustrated at something, I, I'm thinking of like putting something together for some reason. Uh, like I, I am terrible at putting things together. I hate putting things together like from Ikea and stuff like that, like furniture, it drives me nuts. Um, but it's like, sometimes I'll be putting something together like that. And it's like, like things won't be working. Things won't be coming together. But it's because I'm frustrated because I've skipped over something half the time. Time, right where it's like have you ever been reading instructions and you like skip over something and then you go back you're like how, how the hell did I miss that right um, I kind of have that one of those moments happening in my head right now especially with that six of cups in the emperor it's almost like you're I don't think you're discovering something I think you're just going back over things in your head or maybe someone is pointing out uh, something that you missed in the past and that could be the gift that you're receiving with the six of cups as well uh, with the Nine of Swords, you have the Queen of Pentacles focusing on the right things. You can be the bug or the windshield with the Nine of Swords. She is focused on the pentacle. She is not focused on this rabbit that's right here. Rabbits can represent abundance. They can also represent fleetness, things moving very quickly, but they also represent fears, anxiety, depression, you know, all sorts of stuff. And so, you know, she is focused on the pentacle, not the fears. She's not focusing on the anxiety. So I feel for a lot of you, the Nine of Swords is saying, change your focus uh, to what you do want. I know I preach this stuff all the time, but uh, it changed my life. <laughs> so, you know, I know it can change other people's lives. That's why I talk about it so much. Uh, with the two of pentacles, you have the hermit. Hermit is a rite of passage. You have the Six of Swords as well. Uh, both cards right next to each other can represent a rite of passage. A rite of passage is like going through something challenging to get to the other side, but you also earn something by going through a rite of passage. And so I feel that energy for you here, Cancer. Uh, with that desk card, you have this dark man card. It says dealings or relationships with a dark, um, with a man with dark complexion or hair. Again, could be any gender. You have the dark man and the dark woman here. This could just be a divine counterpart coming in for you. That's kind of like what I intuitively feel here. I feel like you really, they, they're similar cards. I feel like you could be attracting a person who is kind of like similar to you in certain ways. But I'm getting more, it's kind of funny that they're both dark dark man, dark woman. I'm getting more of like a yin yang type of thing here where it's like they're the yin to your yang, you know? <laughs> I feel like they kind of, comp, it's more of a complementary relationship. Whenever I get that, you know, kind of duality thing in my head with relationships, uh, to me that kind of points to uh, the potential for more of a complementary relationship where it's like maybe there's some things that you can't do that this person can and vice versa. Um, so I think complementary relationships are actually probably the, maybe the best type of relationships to get into because you complement each other. It's like you improve each other's weaknesses or whatever you want to call it. So uh, definitely could be good. Uh, with, the, with the strength card, you have the king of swords. Um, so you have the king of swords twice here. Uh, the king of swords can represent knowledge or wisdom. The strength card, strength is something we have to work on pretty much every single day. It's like if you want big muscles, you you have to work out every day, right? So the king of swords can represent working your brain muscle and, uh, you know, kind of developing knowledge. I feel like you're learning something or understanding something. Uh, I forgot to pull a card for this middle row here. Uh, you have the progressions 
card. It says a journey. So, you know, it could be some sort of journey that you're going on. Two of wands, three of wands. Could be progress or a journey. Uh, in your bottom row, you have the armadillo. It says groundedness. How crazy is that? Uh, I was talking all about doing the grounding exercises and it won't focus, of course, right? So I do feel like grounding exercises or doing anything, um, like any grounding exercises would be a good idea with that card. Uh, with the two of wands, you have the knight of cups, knight in shining armor coming in for you. So I definitely feel that there could be like a person who is more complimentary coming in for you. That's probably the first thing that will stand out to you. Again, people always ask me, they're like, they look for like what clue uh, could be coming up that this person is right for me. And again, I feel like this person is complimentary. They compliment your weaknesses. Um, they compliment. And again, this is not a bad thing. People always get offended when I say weaknesses. It's like we all have weaknesses. It's not necessarily uh, like a bad thing. It's like my handwriting is actually absolute crap, right? But thank God we have computers. It doesn't matter what my handwriting looks like. It's a weakness, you know? But do, is it, does it affect me? No, <laughs> it doesn't. I don't even care. So there you go. Um, like I said, you know, we all have things that maybe someone else can fill up, right? It's like, I can't, personally, I can't breastfeed a child, right? So it's like, I would need a, a if I want children, I would need a woman to do that. So it's like, again, these weaknesses are not a bad thing necessarily. It's like, we all have these, uh, you know, back and forth things. I don't know why I use that as an example. That was a weird one, but there you go. Popped into my head, so I have to say it, right? But Knight of Cups is uh, Knight in Shining Armor. It could be a dream as well. With the Three of Wands, you have the uh, Temperance card. Uh, definitely turning a positive or a negative into a positive, or you can turn a negative, a positive into a negative with the Temperance card as well. But Temperance is also a rite of passage. He is about to take this path to this crown, that is the path to glory, the path to, you know, success, abundance, whatever he wants. But he is kind of like trying to improve a situation or he's trying to turn a situation around. And this whole entire reading has been about turnarounds, basically, with that six of cups or creating a turnaround in your life. So I would just say there's like a really good turnaround coming in for you. Um, again, you I, I think that this card is more important. I barely even talked about it. Um, I'll show you over here. This haystack card, it says reap what you sow. Uh, I do feel like this type of energy is going to be very important for you is like making sure that you're putting in the energy that you want to receive back, especially with that queen of pentacles. She is a card of resourcefulness and she is a card of being resourceful as well, right? So, uh, you know, it's kind of like a card of uh, needing to focus on the resources that you want or kind of planting the right energy, which definitely comes up here. But a pretty good reading. I would call it a turnaround reading. I think that there's progress here because of that emperor and the six of cups. But again, it has that feeling of skipping instructions to me, you know, or something like that. That's the best way I could describe it. Uh, looks pretty good. Love it. So thank you for being here, Cancer. Really appreciate it. Uh, make sure to watch your sun, moon, and rising for a full picture of what's going on for you at this time. But thank you and definitely enjoy your week.